Hey guys, bonjour tout le monde. Durant cette vidéo, je vais parler en anglais, mais je vais mettre les sous-titres français au-dessous. So let me start with the trip over there and visas. I took, uh, I'm in Toronto and I took a uh, Ethiopian Airlines flight, only one stop from Toronto to Addis Ababa. That was a pretty long flight, about 12 hours. And then we changed and um, flew into Antenna Narivo. Uh, I can't remember, I think the trip was maybe five or six hours, something like that. Uh, on arrival at the airport in, in uh, Antenna Narivo, uh, the airport there seems brand new. I think it's only a couple years old and it was quick much uh, much easier than expected um, even though the flight I was on had a lot of people and it was full uh, and the line moved quite quickly uh, so you just get to the customs and you get the visa there now uh, you can pay in uh, euros or US dollars and I'm trying to remember but I think uh, it's more expensive in US dollars like it worked out to be ten more ten dollars more in US dollars so I just paid in euros uh, as I was carrying euros and US dollars um, and so you, the guy stamps a piece of paper, you have to go pay at another, um, like a cashier, and then you come back to the customs officer and get the, get the visa. That was a little bit confusing because it's never, I've never been in a place like that. Uh, and another thing to note is the airport in Antenna Narivo, there's an international airport and a domestic airport. So if you're going from the capital to another city, flying to another city, there's another uh, domestic airport down the road. It's about, um, I don't know, maybe five five minutes drive or so. It's uh, probably too far to walk, if you, especially if you're carrying baggages, uh, baggage, luggage. Um, so you may have to take a, uh, if you're just going directly to another city, you may have to take a taxi there. Once you're in Madagascar, you're going to find out that getting around within Madagascar can be quite challenging. It's a huge island. Um, what I, think it, I think I read it was the third or fourth largest island in the world. So the distance between cities can be very large. The roads are terrible, you know, lots of potholes and um, washed out roads during rainy season. And um, now you can take domestic flights, but they seem to sell out very quickly. I had problems getting back from uh, Tuliar to the capital for my return flight. Uh, so I had to take a taxi bus, a taxi bus which uh, was, took 24 hours. So basically one, one day of my trip was just sitting in a, bouncing around on bad roads on, in a taxi bus. I would try to book the domestic flights um, before you go there if possible. Uh, the problem is um, it can be difficult to book them online uh, because, for example, I tried to book a flight from uh, the Antenna Narivo to Tuliar online, but they wouldn't accept credit cards from North America. It just that, that was the message I got. So, Another note regarding credit cards is Madagascar, like other African countries, Visa is quite a bit more popular than MasterCard. And you can use MasterCard, but uh, there's places where they only accept Visa. So where to stay in Madagascar? I stayed in a combination of hotels and Airbnbs. Um, there's a lot of hotels in the capital, um, in the range like 30 to 35 US dollars a night. I stayed one the, for four, yeah, about four or five nights when I first got there called Palm Hotel. And uh, it was okay. Uh, one thing I couldn't believe was the internet was so fast. I was um, I was uploading some YouTube videos when I was there, and uh, I thought it was going to take like 24 hours to upload my first video because the file size was very large. But the upload speed was absolutely incredible. I couldn't believe it. And uh, they do have Airbnb. The pickings um, selection wasn't that great. I did stay in a cheap uh, Airbnb for a couple nights before I came back to Canada, and it was small and kind of in a run-down area, but um, it was okay for a couple days. Let me talk about communication. There's a lot of people in Madagascar that do not have phones, or if they have a phone, it's not a smartphone. Um, you know those old school, you remember those old school phones where to type a text message, you would have to like press the zero key like two or three times to get the appropriate letter. They have, there's quite a few phones like that, um, and, and which is great because you don't see a lot of people completely glued to their smartphone all day like you do in many other countries. Uh, WhatsApp was not very popular there at all. 
Facebook is very popular. I think uh, Facebook had some had some program where your act your it was much cheaper to use uh, the internet if you only use Facebook, and so a lot of people have Facebook there. Regarding language, uh, the two main languages spoken in Madagascar are French and Malagasy. Um, I have intermediate level French, so I didn't have any problems. But if you only speak English, uh, you're gonna, I think you're going to struggle a bit, uh, especially because most of the expats are French uh, and they don't speak English either. So um, Now, there's quite a few people that only spoke Malagasy that did not even speak French. Uh, I didn't notice that in the capital, it seemed like everyone spoke French that I was communicating with. But uh, down south, um, when I was in Tuliar, there's, I would say, maybe 40% of the people or so did not speak French. Or if they did, they just spoke a few words, you know, bonjour, monsieur. Uh, something else that's important to research before you go is depending on what month you go and where you go within Madagascar, just make sure you're not going at a time of the year where it's going to rain all bloody day. Like, for example, I was actually considering coming back to um, Madagascar in January. I, was, I wanted to go to Mahunga, but then I looked at uh, online and they had some weather charts. And Mahunga in January was like a nonstop uh, rainstorm. I mean, just really high uh, level of rain every day. It seems like it rains, rains for hours every day during that month. Uh, so you can find out all this information online, just where you're going, and uh, just look at the weather charts to see what the temperature is and how often it's going to rain. So in conclusion, I really enjoyed my trip to Madagascar. I'm going back, um, I'm probably going back in mid-2023. I was looking at going back even sooner, but the, the, it seemed like it's rainy season, and I'd rather go when the weather's a little bit better. So anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Mamba. No, no mercy.